Hello, vintage lovers. I am at the Coeur d'Alene Midtown Home and Vintage Market. We'll see if we can find something to flip for a profit. Okay, so the first booth has nothing vintage at all. And that is a thing in these decorator malls. They say vintage, but to them, vintage sometimes is a look. None of this is old. A lot of blue and white painted furniture, of course, we come to expect that, but they did leave this one alone. It's a nice little bird's eye maple dresser, a very nice size too. 365, these were very popular around 1920 with the serpentine front drawers and this very pretty maple veneer. And this is a very pretty oak cabinet. It's priced at $9.95, side by side with the display on the left and the leaded glass display window on top. Very nice piece. I have to say $9.95 is what they used to go for. I can't get quite that much for them anymore, but in this context, maybe they can. Now these seem to be vintage, all these paper mache. There are reproductions. Let's see if we can tell the difference or if these are all old. This one's priced at $50. It's got a $0.25 cent mark on it. That's a good clue for it being old. This one seems to have wear in the normal places and the correct bottom. So I think all of these are legit, except this guy. This guy is a reproduction. And he's not pretending not to be. He says made in the Philippines right on him. You notice it's not as heavy a paper as the other paper mache because modern processes don't require as much material. And then there's this guy here. And he is priced at 50 as well, and I think he's another legitimate one. So we've just got one repro here. They're all priced around the correct price of $50. This is a great old dress form with an interesting box that's been put in the middle of it for display purposes with little drawers. I guess that'd be a nice jewelry chest. I mean, I have to say of the spaces in here so far, I prefer this one because most of the things in it are truly vintage, even if they've been recast or restyled or reupholstered, they're actually dealing with old stuff, as opposed to some of the spaces that are dealing primarily with new things. Now these folks have a bunch of old amber glass, Fenton and Moon and Stars. Again, because we're in a decorator market, it's likely to be priced full retail unless there's something they've overlooked. Now this definitely is a very northwest looking space here. The antlers, the use of ladders, see how they use the ladders to make the roof of this sort of shed that they're hanging everything from. That's very clever. Layers of tables, old galvanized wash bin under here, or actually I say wash bin, but it's actually a horse trough. The wash bins are up here, and they are on a real folding ringer bench from about 1900, which is priced at 249 with the two chairs and the two with the two tubs that's a pretty fair price really now the clocks and things are all new the car hood is not new nor is this print this dealer has primarily vintage things they've mixed in a few th newer items and they definitely have given it a decorator slant but most of the stuff in here is old, and I really, really prefer that because if I go in a place that says vintage, I want there to be vintage things. I don't really want to look at new retro stuff. Peoria pottery, this is quite old, about 1910. It would have been a churn. It's missing the top, however. And we have the famous Leroy Neiman glass in here for a Playboy with the girl, and it's priced at $20, which is about what they're going for now. A lamp made out of coral is clever. Old ship's wheel here. These sort of displays, even these things for little flat things we didn't used to know what to do with, are finding homes now because people are finding lots of ways to use any sort of old displays these days. I wonder how much this one is. Okay, it's $60. That's a pretty good price. If it was for something more interesting than stove bolts, I'd be very tempted. I was talking about trophies recently, and here's a Bakelite one made into a jewelry box for a women bowler in 1959, priced at $50. That's pretty neat. Gosh, and this was third place in Saudi Arabia, the women's third master's tournament. I didn't think women in Saudi Arabia were allowed to dress like that. These were very popular 
I believe they were Italian made in the 1970s. They tend to be very thin, so you have to be careful of breakage. But the idea was that you put the ice here, and then you could use the bottle for white wine or something else you wanted chilled. $15.75. A lot of vintage clothing in here, and vintage clothing certainly is a legitimate vintage, although they see a lot of things that don't seem particularly vintagey. I can honestly say if I never see a fake new tin piece with gather painted on it again, I will be a happy man. This place has some vintage vinyl as well as CDs. Cute little egg cups. Now here's a cute row of figures we don't see very often. These are Dealey ceramics from California. There is a book about them. And these are priced about $22.50 each. They usually had their name on a paper label. So there's Katrina. Not sure who this gal is. There's Maria. There's Maria in a different paint scheme. They're very cute. The price is about right on these. They were very popular when they came out in the late 40s and early 50s. This was one of the many small California pottery makers. The Royal Typewriter here has the green keys and this extra little attachment here for the shift key, priced at 89 We sure see a whole lot of this. It says, beautiful vintage dresser. Now, I like what they did to it, but you can't really even tell it's vintage under there anymore. It is actually an old dresser, I can tell, because this escutcheon has been left, and that is early 1900s, but all the handles have been changed. Everything has been repainted. The drawers have been relined. I mean, what about this is left that is actually vintage? I know I must really seem like a purist and a bit of a prig about all of this stuff, but, you know, when I go into a place and it says vintage in huge letters, I really want to see more vintage. I don't really want to see a bunch of stuff like behind me here that, I mean, it looks great. It's cool. I like what they've done. They're very talented at the display here. It's not about that. It's just not old. This is what especially drives me nuts. Bless this vintage kitchen on a new towel. Now this one is integrating vintage and more recent decorator items in a way that to me is more successful because it's not all brand new. You know, there's some old copper. We see copper coming back into fashion. This piece here, this samovar is an interesting shape, priced at 325. I love the old Arvin radio with the stars in the dial. That's going to be from about 1950, priced at 99. Old cookbook is fun. Now these are more recent vintage, but they're not brand new. They're 1990s reproduction. A bunch of turned wood. This was also very popular to make and sell in the 1990s in the Northwest, where you took pieces together and did designs. This appears to be a real bread bowl, an actual old one, from what I can tell, at least so far. Let's see if we can tell anything about the wear when we look into it here. It looks like it was all put together by hand, but I'm not sure if I see natural wear or if this is just the way this was carved out. I would expect to see less bumpy surfaces for something that had been used for decades, so I'm thinking that this one's a reproduction. However, the rattan cart is not a reproduction, and that's something that is definitely becoming popular again now that Golden Girls decorating is coming back. This mid-century glass set in the caddy is cute, $64, so that's about $8 per. And again, here's a nice corner piece so these stores are really good if you are looking for antique furniture. There is a chance you're going to find some good things in here. Let's see how they have this price. This is dark stained oak from about 1900, American made, and it is $6.99. The corner cabinets are definitely not as common in the early 1900s American oak. And this repurposing is kind of clever. They took an old washboard and made a little shelf unit for your laundry. I've sold those like that before. Save the world. Buy vintage. Great idea. Too bad that sign that says that is not vintage. 
On the other hand, here's a great piece of repurposing. A bunch of old rolling pins made into a really cool mirror that has a modernist aspect even though it's made of primitive items. That is fun. This person obviously is making a few of these. Clever idea. This is a different kind of console set. This is a daisy ring. These were popular on 1920s and 30s tables. You would float little flowers in these in a ring in the middle of the table and then put candlesticks or little figures as decoration. Ardalt from Japan redid these in the 1960s in this nice white porcelain. Here's a very pretty European marble table. That orangey marble typically is something we see from Belgium, especially with this very fancy deep carving on it. This should date to about 1920. It's priced at $4.99. That's actually a fair price for what it is. You don't see these a lot. And there's a neat stained glass window back here too that's a whole lot of panels of stained glass and a few replaced with clear for $1.89. Another big ship's wheel here and the Shell oil pump. Now these folks have a lot of just little interesting odd small. So let's see if there's anything we need in the middle of them. A kangaroo and joey for five dollars. That's something else. Timberjack. This is a little bottle opener or paperweight. Twenty dollars. 82 World's Fair. I definitely am seeing people starting to collect this. Seven dollars on that's a pretty good price. Yep. It's interesting. We all have different things that we look for in different ways. We like to see them presented. I just heard the people walking by talk about how much they love this place because it Everything is very minimalist and well displayed and you can see everything. That is true and they were saying it's a lot different than those malls that are full of just all sorts of little junk. I have to tell you though as a dealer, I do better in malls with a lot of little junk. And why? Well because the minimalist decorator who might come in here and say, oh I love the fact that it's not all cluttered, I notice none of them are carrying anything because they're minimalist. They're not your customer. Spokane World's Fair stuff. We have the Jim Bean bottle, $15. Kind of a typical price for the Spokane one. Here's the flag and postcards and little trays. I left my footprint at Expo. And then my favorite part are the bumper stickers. Because you can just imagine these being on some big old AMC Matador back in the time. All this day glow color on some car, probably painted in one of those colors. And these are five dollars each. But underneath all of this is the thing I think might be the most interesting. This appears to be the World's Fair logo, which is based on the Mobius strip, and it was turned into a serving tray. That could be really cool. Unfortunately, it's been used, so it's pretty wrinkled. But I love the concept. Maxfield Parish, this is Daybreak. That's a very pretty, very, very pretty scene. $35. Copper Fire Extinguisher is $98, and that is about what they run these days. Now, this booth definitely has vintage things. I really like the color of this little Formica top table here. It's priced at $140. The Leaping Deer on the tapestry from the 40s or 50s definitely looks like something you would have seen in someone's rumpus room in the northwest at the time. And if you're from Idaho, you might remember these from the 60s or 70s that show various attractions, including Hell's Canyon, Shoshone Falls, the Capitol, the Craters of the Moon, and the Big Mormon Temple. There are large areas of Idaho that are very connected to the Mormon faith. This is Royal Copley, this wall pocket. We don't see this one very often. It's $18. It's in great shape and it's actually got the mark on the back as well as the paper label. They often were not marked on the back. Hull Pottery made the little red riding hood pieces that you see here. The cookie jar with the poppies is $175. It's one of the more common transfers. Poinsettias are worth a lot more. These are 45 for the set. It came out in 1947, was a huge seller for Hull. These look like they're out of the 50s. I don't recognize them. Let's see if there's a name on them. I don't see one. They're likely to be California pottery. 
Ah, uh, there's our name. Well, maybe we'll find out. Oh, no. Look at that. They are Lefton. So they actually are Japanese. And they are priced at 78 for the pair. That's an early Lefton mark from the 50s. Here's a bunch of Anna Lee Christmas related items made in New Hampshire. They do still make these. There are a lot of discontinued pieces and these painted faces are the clues to Anna Lee. You can see it in their eyes. Prices on these appear to be somewhere in the oh, 11 to 20 dollar range, which seems typical. I have never seen this glass pelican before. It's good quality. It feels kind of greasy like newer glass though, so I think I'm going to leave it. Then there's a whole bunch of this. I defy you to find anything vintage, except that dresser maybe. Again, for antique furniture, these can be really good places to look. Here's a neat old, I don't know, maybe a potato bin, I would guess, with old green paint. True old green paint. Take a look at this. This is how old paint should look. It's worn where people use the surface. There's unevenness. You can tell that somebody was probably right-handed because this end got used more than this end. You know, there's just certain things that you look at with old furniture as opposed to something that is painted brand new and then scraped in a few places to look old. This guy's really cool. The Grand Champion Working Horse from Ogden, Utah. But that's $138, so it's a little out of my budget. Nice mantelpiece over there. And this is a traveling bird cage. This would have been something you would have taken birds around to meets or you would have taken birds home from a store in. About $19.20, priced at $98. Again, I have to say, everything in here looks good. They definitely have the look. I wish the look included some more vintage things, but they have done a nice job with the arrangement and the displays. They are very good, and you could imagine living in a space like this, perhaps, if it's your taste. I like these pendant lamps here. The amber one is priced at $145, and this Clear three-piece set is priced at $275. They really have gone up in value. Another nice piece of oak furniture here from the East Lake era. We see this deep spoon carving with the East Lake and these repeating dental moldings with the dots, these bullseyes in the corner. American East Lake is much more design heavy than English East Lake. Charles East Lake actually was writing treatises in England against massive ornamentation, but we just took some of his elements and then massively ornamented with them. It's still a pretty cool look though, I have to admit I've always liked it. And speaking of which, if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you haven't, because then you can click the bell to be notified of future videos. And check out our membership packages, you can hit the join button below if you see that, or check the links in the description for more information. When you ask why I get so upset about reproductions and fantasy items, it's because, well, frankly, the new stuff drives the old stuff out of the market. So we have a bunch of new old mushrooms here, all brand new. You can order more. There's some more down there. Because of that, there's not one vintage mushroom in this place because they can't compete on price with these brand new fakes. Well, I have to say it was a fun diversion. They were friendly. There were a few things worth buying. I can't say that this is my type of store in a general sense because their idea of vintage and mine, well, I think vintage should be old and they think vintage means grapes. I don't mean to be too much of a sourball about that last place. I thought they had a beautifully kept store. Everything looked good. The displays were great. The help was nice. I'm sure they do well. It's just really frustrating to me when I see someone like Laura Caldwell who can style old stuff and it's all vintage and she makes it look really great like you would have in an interior of a home. And then I see other people doing it and they're just ordering new stuff because it's easy. It's not imaginative. Okay, so the Decorator Mall was not really my place to shop, but maybe the Union Gospel Mission Thrift Store is. I'm here in Spokane, Washington, just over the border from Idaho. They have these mission thrift stores in northern Idaho and the Spokane area, and I understand that they are usually pretty good. 
Well, it's big and clean, I'll say that for it. And I see something right away that I think is collectible. So let's take a look in the hard goods. $12 on this very pretty picture with the little dots. I am not sure who made that piece. It's American made, I would say, looking at the way the handle is applied. That's rather attractive. They're round hobs. It's not Fenton. I am not sure who the maker of that is. But boy, they have a lot of old cups and saucers. I see lusterware. I see 1950s dinnerware. Yeah, this place already has more stuff than any of the thrift stores I'm used to in western Kentucky. So we're going to have some fun. Plates galore. Now most collectors' plates are not worth a lot. We do have an Expo 74 World's Fair here from Spokane. We also over here have JFK. Interestingly enough, this was sold in Abilene, Kansas, where Eisenhower was from. There's a George Washington plate that looks like probably Adams from England, 1930s. Yeah, 1932 is the George and Martha Washington for the bicentennial of his birth. And there's a Vernon Kilns plate under here that I'll bet is also President's because I see stars around it. Oh yes, there we go. It's got all the presidents up to and including Eisenhower. Vernon Kilns actually made the 1956 Republican National Convention plate for the Eisenhower campaign. And there it is. the Our presidential gallery, Vernon Kilns, USA, out of Los Angeles. Actually out of Vernon, California, an industrial town on the edge of LA. Little Limoges piece, I believe. No, it's Bavarian. Okay, well, these are cute. Again, singles, probably not. There's Limoges. This one looks like it might be Greek. Redware. Six dollars on the Westmoreland milk glass cup and saucers in the grape. Here's a big set of Knolls of China with the open roses. These pieces are Blue Ridge or Southern Potteries, depending how they're marked, all at two and three dollars piece. If you collect this pattern, it's a great deal. I'm not seeing marks on any of these, maybe on the platter. Sometimes they're not marked, it just depended. They were not consistent about that at all. Nope, no mark at all. This set has been broken up into a few different sets. And this one is a Mikasa China set, Woodmere, from the 1970s, when Mikasa started to be a big player in the dinnerware market in this country. Now, cups and saucers can range in age and quality. That one's got a very cute little girl painted on it, $6. This one has a very pretty exotic bird in it for $5. This one is... Let's see if we can make out the label better on this one. It is Paragon. I thought it seemed like it had great quality, so I think I'm going to take that piece because some of these Paragon cups and saucers can be very valuable. The Japanese fruit, the hand painting's a little loose on that. Same with this bird. The Japanese pieces tended to be Me Too's in the early days. Another little English set there. Okay, I see bone dishes. I see a little handled nappy bowl. That's Kinode from Japan. This might be Mutlock's color stacks down here. They used to give this away on the prices right in the 1980s. Of course, as soon as I say that, I turned it over and it's actually Signature House Wears Carnival, which was the Japanese knockoff from the 1980s of Mutlock's color stack. And the fun fish platter down here. I like those lips. Who did you? Amora made in Italy. Well, let's see what we can find down this aisle. Little Egyptian perfume bottles. Only one has its stopper, however. Those were made in the 1990s, and there definitely are collectors for them now. These ruby flash cut uh, clear are etched with flowers, 1950s and 60s era but they want 10 apiece on those, and that's more than I can get. These are, on the other hand, a very good deal, if you recognize the pattern. This is Fostoria Colony, and it's fire polished, so you don't see the mold seams too much unless you really look for it. The mold seam is right there, but notice that it's polished, so you don't see it up in the top of the glass. 
That's why Fostoria was a little better quality than the other makers. And that's actually a really good deal on those. Lots of little figurines, but these all seem pretty recent in vintage. Nothing I really see that I need. Same with the doll. They do have furniture. They seem to have everything here. One nice thing is this is a regional chain, so they're not taking the stuff out and sending it to some central source to sell elsewhere. That's why you'll see bins full of patterns. Some old patterns are definitely worth picking up, but I would stick to 1970s and earlier. We see electronics, including these old realistic speakers ooh, with the oiled walnut veneer, $16 for the pair. That's probably a good deal. Not sure how you would test them, though. Some of this stuff you just have to kind of look over and see if it seems like it should work and take a chance. That's why it's thrift store priced. It's also why, honestly, I get a little frustrated when I hear some resellers complaining about the thrift stores and their prices. Well, you know, there are other places to shop and get deals besides thrift stores, and the truth is, is that they have as much of a right to try to make money on it as we do. Especially a place like this that's doing it for a mission. You know, I mean, they're doing it for a good cause, so you can hardly blame them for trying to get money where they can from the things that they know are good. There's still going to be plenty of stuff that passes through that resellers can make money on. Rows and rows of books, lots of record albums. I really have to get on to Seattle or I would spend some more time with these because when there's so many coming from so many sources, there's probably something interesting in all of this. Like Frank Fontaine, sings like crazy. Looks a little crazy too. <laughs> Love Story. Oh, that was so popular when it was new in the early 70s. Doesn't love always mean having to say you're sorry? And there's an example, this old Love Story album, Ally McGraw and Ryan O'Neill. It's not unwrapped, but it does have its original cellophane, so you know the cover's in good shape. The album seems to be in great shape. They're selling for about $12 now, and I see here that records are... How much? Does it even say? That makes me think that it's really cheap, because... I see low prices on the other stuff. It's been long enough since the isolation of the pandemic that it might be time to get some new games or new old games for this holiday season. I am seeing board games starting to sell again. Pictures and frames and more frames and more pictures. This looks like a Ray Dunn here. It's only two dollars. I don't think I need anyone to encourage me. I could being brave is good. Working hard, well, yeah, it's good too, but I do plenty of that. They are starting their holiday displays, but I don't see anything old for me on those. Ooh, let's see what they have in faces and planters and ceramics. This is kind of interesting here, this brass piece. You know people are getting interested in brass. Again, I like that yellowing, the blackening there. This is $8. I suspect that that's probably not a bad price, all in all. And boy, they've got the shoes. Lots of art hanging up above. I don't see anything old that I need there. Sometimes the end caps have the most interesting stuff, but these look like they're sort of the leftovers of the fall display. Well, I can't say I'm finding a ton here, but I've already found more in this thrift store than I found in all of the thrift stores I went to in Boise, Idaho. So this end of the state seems to be the place to be. They want plenty for them, but these are the 2004 and 2015 editions of the Millennium Falcon. Of course, the one you really want is the original from the early 70s. These are really cool. These are flag holders. This is for the Women's Auxiliary Corps, and it has fraternity, charity, and loyalty stamped into it. $75, they're asking. Well, I see why people are talking about Union Gospel Mission thrift stores as being a good place to find stuff. There definitely were things to buy. Now I've got to get on the road and finish the rest of this trip because I've got the Portland Antique Show. Actually, we call it the Rose City Vintage Market now. And that's coming up next weekend. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.